Hello and welcome to your week seven oboe lesson. I'm Miss Carpenter and I'm thrilled to get to work with you today. Today we're going to be reviewing what we've been working on in the past several weeks with interval training. So we're going to be talking about our seconds, our thirds, our fourths, our fifths, and even some sixths this week. We're also going to be reviewing our time signatures. You can see all of this information up at the top and throughout your worksheet for this week. Um, so far, all of the songs we've done with you in band have been four, four songs, songs with four beats in each measure where the quarter note gets one beat. Today, we're going to do some songs in three. So instead of there being four beats in each measure, there will be three. If you need to review a measure is the space between two bar lines, and you'll see that in the graphic at the top of your sheet. So a measure is that space in between those vertical lines that break up your music. So we're used to ones that, that break it up into groups of four beats. Today, we're gonna to be working with some songs that group it up into groups of three beats. Before we get started, make sure that you've got your read and it's been soaking a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and let's play a couple of buzzed tones together and that will help us to be ready to play today. All right, so let's play a couple of buzzes. Let's play some low buzzes first. Let's try again. Let's try some high buzzes. And again. And now let's go low to high back down to low. All right, if you're ready, let's move on to exercise one. All right, exercise one has two parts to it. You'll see that you've got two staves that we're working on two different staffs. Your first one is in 4-4 four, four, and your second one is in 3-4. So we have four beats per measure in the first exercise and three beats per measure in the second exercise. There's a written component to this exercise and I really think it will help you if you do it. So for the first part, what you're going to do is you're going to write the number of the beat below each note. Remember, when you cross one of those bar lines, you start over again at one. And in the example provided for you, the ones are written in both times to remind you. So go ahead and write in your beat numbers first. So you'll have four beats per measure in the first exercise, three beats per measure in the second exercise. Then in the next set of lines below that one, you'll see the note names are written in for you, starting with B flat. So go through and write in your note names. Remember to write B flat and not B. Remember to write E flat and not E. That will help you as we move through this exercise. So go ahead and do those first. Once you've finished with that, you can go ahead and count and clap it like we normally would say your note names and move your fingers. And when you're ready, press play and we'll play exercise one together. All right, now that you're ready, let's play these together. You're going to hear four clicks of my metronome. We'll breathe on the fourth click and then we'll play. How'd you do? Not too tough, right? All right, let's keep going. We're going to try it in three this time. So my metronome will be a little bit different. This time you're going to hear six clicks. On the sixth click, we'll breathe and then we'll play together. Feels a little different. It's kind of a dancey sort of a beat. Very good. If you want to try again, feel free to go back and play it again. If you're ready, let's move on and play our intervals. All right, number two is called intervals for this week. 
Now, we've been talking about intervals a lot for the past couple of weeks. This is what we call an expanding interval drill. It sounds a lot harder than it actually is. All this is, is a pattern. We start by playing B flat, then we go up a second, then we play another B flat, then we go up a third, then we play another B flat, then we go up a fourth, then we play another B flat, and we end on an F, our fifth. Then for the second half of this exercise, we play an F and we go down a second, then another F and down a third, then another F and down a fourth, and then finally another F and down a fifth. You'll notice there's a repeat sign, so we're going to play this exercise twice. The second time through, you'll see that there's a funny symbol over our last note. That is called a fermata. Sometimes you'll hear them call it a bird's eye because it does look a little bit like an eyeball. And an eyeball is a great way to think about it. A fermata means that we hold that beat longer than we normally would. Usually it's a quarter note. It just gets one beat. This time it's going to be longer than that. How much longer? Well, you won't know, which is why we like to think about it like an eyeball. Because your eyeballs need to go to the conductor when this happens because the conductor will tell you how long to hold it. You might just hold it for two beats. You might hold it for 20 beats. We don't know. So when we get there, what's going to happen is I will play the note for you. I'll pretend that I'm playing it right now. So I play it for you, and then you'll hear me nod my head, and then we'll cut off together. Okay, so that's how you will know. Take your eyeballs when you get to the eyeball or the fermata symbol and put them on me, and I will show you where to cut off, all right? All right, so take a moment now, practice this a few times, make sure to count and clap it, say your note names and move your fingers, and when you're ready, press play again, and we will go ahead and play number two intervals together. Okay, if you're ready, let's play intervals together. short for Mata because I was running out of air. <laughs> if you need more practice on that one, go back and play it again. If not, let's keep going and go to the Blue Danube Waltz. All right, the Blue Danube Waltz. Sometimes the name of a piece will tell us a lot about it. In this case, the word waltz tells us quite a bit about the Blue Danube Waltz. Waltz is a dance step. It comes out of Germany and it's an old dance step and it has three steps in it. Um, so it's all in groups of three, which is why our music, if you look, is in groups of three. Every waltz that you ever play will be in three. You might feel like it's almost in one because it's fast. This is not a particularly fast waltz, so you don't have to worry about that. You have heard this song before. Your parents have heard it, your siblings have heard it. If you've, if you've heard cartoons, you have heard this song. It's a really, really common orchestral song that is used. So this is a great song to play for your family or for a sibling or for a friend because they will know this one. So if you're doing our little at-home concert series, this is a great song for it. So is the next one for that matter. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. First of all, obviously we are in three. The second thing is that we have those jumps of a third, for the most part, there's a few places where they aren't thirds, at the beginning of each one of these lines with a slur over top of it. This is a really smooth piece, so we want to make sure that our fingers move as smoothly as possible and we don't tongue or breathe over those slurs. There's lots of rests in here, so you can breathe over the rests. Don't breathe on the slurs. The other thing that I wanted to draw your attention to is our dotted half note at the end. That's a three count note. We've talked about those before, but I just wanted to refresh your memory. Okay, I, re I recommend with this song, take some time as you're counting and clapping it. Say the word rest out loud on the rest. It will help you because at first it's going to feel like it's very easy to get lost in this song. If you say rest out loud, it's much simpler. So it's going to go something like this. One, two, three, one, rest, three, one, rest, three, one, rest. 
okay? So like that as you're going, this will make it so much easier for you when we clap and count and when you say your note names, say rest. When we're playing it, I want you to think rest in your head on every one of those rests. This will go much better if you do that and you'll have a lot more fun playing it. All right, take the time now to count and clap, say your note names and move your fingers, and when you're ready, press play and we'll play it together. All right, now that you're ready, let's play the Blue Danube Waltz together. You're going to hear six clicks. We will breathe on the fifth one. go back and try again, feel free. I love that song. I think it's a lot of fun to play and very beautiful. If you're ready, let's move on to Lavender Blue. Lavender Blue was one of my very favorite songs to play when I was first learning how to play an instrument. As you go through this, it looks more complicated than it is. As you move through, take a look. You have fifths and you have jumps of a sixth, mostly starting on B flat. Then you have those eighth note patterns, but the eighth note patterns are just going straight down your B flat scale. F, E flat, D, C, B flat, okay? So straight down the scale, the pattern you know best of all. So it's not as hard as you think it is. Make sure you're slurring in the places you should be slurring. And if you look at the end, you'll see a repeat sign. So we will play this twice through. Take a few seconds to count and clap, to say your note names and move your fingers, and when you're ready, press play and we'll play it together. Welcome back. Now that you're ready, let's play Lavender Blue together. Remember your repeat sign at the end. You'll hear six clicks, we will breathe on the sixth click, and then we will play. Remember, you can go back and review any part of this exercise today that you need, any part of this video. Thank you so much for joining with me to play your oboe today. I hope you had fun doing it. I know I certainly did. I hope that you are practicing at least four times per week, at least 10 minutes per time. I hope you're getting outside and enjoying your time with your family. I miss you, and I cannot wait to see you again. It's going to feel so good to be able to play our instruments together again. I hope that you are enjoying this time. I hope that you're taking the opportunity to play some of these pieces for your family or for your friends. I know it's not the same as having your school concert, but it's about as close as we can do right now. Again, I do miss you. And while I'll see you in person very soon, I hope, I'll see you this way next week. <laughs>